Hey guys, in this video we'll be doing network in graph theory. I'll be covering simple and non-simple graph, directed and non-directed, weighted and unweighted graphs, as well as subgraphs and trees. So stay tuned. So the first thing we need to know is A graph is basically made of vertices, also known as nodes, and edges, also known as links. Let's look at the graph on the right. This here is a graph. V represents the vertices. Singular is known as vertex. And E represents the edges. V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6. We have six vertices here. And edges, E1 until E6. We have six edges as well. Edges connect vertices. So edges are also known as links. Or relations vertices are also known as nodes so as long as there is one vertex it can be considered a graph that means there can be just one vertex without any edges it is still considered a graph there is no minimum number of edges however there needs to be at least one vertex let's look at how to represent the vertices and edges so we represent in set notation V equals to then name the vertices here is V1 to V6, sometimes it can be in letters, A to E. All we have to do is represent each vertex as an element in a set. So this is the set of vertices in this graph. NV is the number of vertices. So the total number of vertices here, we have 6 vertices, so equals to 6. Edges, same thing. Edges we represent in set notation. Each edge we represent as an element in the set. So edges can have different names as well. Can, they can be represented as letters as well. So whatever it is, you just represent as elements in the set. NE is the number of edges. Here we have six edges too. So NE equals to six. Now there are many different types of graph. Of course, the number of vertices is not necessarily the same as the number of edges, as we will see. Degree of vertex. The degree of vertex is the number of edges that connects a vertex to other vertices. For example, let's look at dv1. dv1 means the degree of v1. So the degree of this vertex. Let's see how many edges that connects it to other vertices. So from v1, there's only one edge going out. One edge that connects to v2. So there's only the degree of v1 is 1. Let's look at v2. v2, there are three edges going out of v2 that connects to other vertices. So V2, the number, the degree of V2 is 3. V3 also has 3 edges that are connecting it to other vertices. And so the degree of V3 is also 3 and so on. So you look at the number of edges that is coming out of the vertex. This is the sum of degrees of the graph. So the sum of degrees of the graph, just count, just sum up all the individual degrees of the vertices and we will get 12 and this is a relation that we need to know the sum of the degrees of a graph is equals to 2 times the number of edges so if you want to know the number of the sum of the degrees of the graph you just have to count the edges and multiply by 2 let's look at this graph for example so here we have the number of edges is 6 we have 6 edges so 6 times 2 is 12 now this relation can also be used to check if a graph is possible to be drawn based on the number of degrees of the vertices. So you sum up all the degrees of the vertices and if you get an even number, a multiple of 2, then the graph can be drawn. But if you get an odd number that is not a multiple of 2, then the graph cannot be drawn. This relationship must be true for all the graphs. Simple and non-simple graphs. To understand whether it's simple or not, we have to understand multiple edges and loops. The multiple edges are when more than one edge connects two vertices. Let's look at V3 and V5. This is V3 and this is V5. You can notice that E4 is an edge that connects V3 to V5. And E7 is also an edge that connects V3 to V5. There are two edges that connect the same pair of vertices. Now this is known as multiple edges. You can also look at V5 and V6. V5 and V6, there is E6, E9 and E8 connecting the two vertices. 
So as long as there is more than one edge connecting two vertices, this is known as multiple edges. Same like just now, we have six vertices, number of edges. Now we have nine edges and the total sum of the degrees of the vertices is 18. Because we have nine edges, we just have to multiply by two and we find it to be 18. Now let's look at loops. Loops are an edge that connects a vertex to itself. Let's look at this E7. You can see E7, it starts from V3 and then it goes back to V3. So this is known as a loop. Same here as E8. Starts at V6, goes back to V6. So these are known as loops. So a simple graph is a graph without multiple edges or loops. When there are no multiple edges or loops, the graph is known as a simple graph. When there is either multiple edges, loops or both, like this. This one has multiple edges, so it is not a simple graph. This graph has loops, so it's not a simple graph. This graph has both, multiple edges as well as loops. So this is not a simple graph. Directed versus undirected. From the name itself, you can tell that then in a directed graph, edges are assigned directions. So let's look at this. You can see there are arrows. Arrows here is from C to B, A to B, D to B. So whenever there are arrows, whenever the edges are assigned directions, then it is known as a directed graph. The edges in a directed graph are represented using set notation as well like this. But now the elements are written as a pair of vertices. So let's look at this AB. AB means the direction is from A to B. So the order of vertices matter here. Here let's look at the next pair CB. CB means the direction is from C to B. DB means the edge has a direction from D to B. So this is how we represent directed graph. This is how we represent the edges in pairs of vertices. You have to follow the order. Now let's look at HCB. So for HCB, C is known as the initial vertex. This is the initial vertex because the H starts from C and goes to B. And B is the terminal vertex where it ends. So initial, terminal. Degrees are separated here into D in and D out because there is direction. D in of A, there is no H going into A. So there is, is zero. Let's look at D in for B. For B, there are three edges going into B. So DE will be three. For C, no H is going into C. Everything is going out. So this will be zero. D in for D, there is only one H going out of D. There is nothing coming into D. So D is zero. D in for E. Okay, here, how do we deal with the loop? So for the loop, you see there's no direction here because it doesn't matter. Either way, it's going out of E and coming back into E. So for E, this loop here is considered one out and one in. So there's two ins for E. And then for F, there's two ins. So D in for F is two. So these are the degrees for the edges that are going into that vertex. Then we have out as well. Out the same, same method. So A, we have one going out. B, we have zero. None is going out of B. C we have 3, D we have 1, E we have 2 because of the loop. 1 here and 1 of the loop. So this is a 2 and then F will be 0. Nothing is going out of F. So we separate into the degrees that are of the edges going in and the edges going out of the vertex. An undirected graph is when the edges are not assigned any directions like this one. There's no directions here, they are just edges. For a weighted graph, the edges are assigned values or weight. Let's look at this graph for example. So AB is given a value of 5. Now these values can represent anything. They can represent distance, they can represent uh, price, they can represent weight. They can take on any value. But as long as an edge is assigned a value, then this is known as a weighted graph. So AB, the weight is 5, BC, the weight is 7. Uh, CF the weight is 1, EF the weight is 9 and so on. As long as there's a value assigned to the H, then it is known as a weighted graph. An unweighted graph does not have any values or weight like this. This graph does not have any values at the edges and this is known as an unweighted graph. A 
a subgraph is part of the graph. So let's look at this graph here. A subgraph can be either part of the graph that is redrawn. You can take any part of the graph and redraw or the whole graph itself. Don't forget this. The whole graph redrawn is also considered a subgraph of itself. The edges and vertices must be in the exact same position. For it to be considered a subgraph, you cannot change any vertex. You cannot change any edge. They have to be exactly where they were in the original graph. Then the vertices of the subgraph must be a subset of the vertices of the graph. The vertices of the subgraph must belong to the original graph. So they will be a subset of the original graph. Same goes to the edges. The edge of the subgraph must be a subset of the original graph. Let's look at this graph here. So this graph is basically exactly the same as this graph is redrawn here. So it is a subgraph. Let's look at this graph. Now the vertices are the same. A, B, C, D, E, F. No ch change in position of the vertices. And they've only drawn three edges here. So these edges 2, 3, 4, 2, 3, 4, they are the same. Now even though there is no edge connecting here, like the original graph, these vertices are a subset of the original graph and these edges are the subset of this original graph and there's no change in position of anything. Therefore, this is a subgraph. Let's look at this graph. So here the edges are the same, 1, 2, 4 and 6. Let's look at the vertices. A, okay, look at this B and C is changed. This is B but this is C. And then E and F is still the same. So when you change the vertices like this, it is not considered a subgraph anymore. For it to be a subgraph, the vertices must remain exactly the same. So this has to be B and this has to be C. Let's look at this. So this is, all the vertices are exactly the same. A, B, C, D, E, F. They are in exactly the same position as the original graph. Although there are no edges, this is only vertices. All these vertices are a subset of the vertices of the original graph. So this is considered a subgraph. Let's look at what a tree is. A tree can exist by itself or it can be a subgraph of another graph. A tree is a simple graph. Simple graph meaning there is no multiple edges or no loops as we discussed just now. Let's look at this one. This one has no multiple edges and no loops. All vertices must be connected. Here yes, all vertices are connected. The number of edges in a tree will be the number of vertices minus 1. If you look here, the number of edges here is, there are 6 edges. And then the number of vertices are 6. So the number of edges here equals to the number of vertices. We already know it is not a tree. But why? Because all trees must be acyclic. Meaning that there cannot be a cycle like this. It cannot be closed. It has to be open like this. As long as it's close like this, when there is a cycle, it is not a tree. So if we remove either one of this, like this, this is a tree because there's no cycle, all the vertices are connected and it is a simple graph. There's no multiple edges and there's no loops. This is also considered a tree. All vertices are connected, no multiple edges or loops and it is acyclic. This is also a tree. All vertices connected, no cycle and no multiple edges or loops. So a tree can exist as a graph on its own or it can be a subgraph of another graph. So what is networks in graph theory then? Network in graph theory is when we use the graph to represent real life data. So these vertices can represent anything. These vertices can represent different cities or it can represent the members of the family. And then these edges here represent the relationship between the vertices. So if A represents the members of a family, for example, then the edges will give us the relationship between the members of the family. If the vertices represent different cities, then the edges can be the distance between the cities, for example. It can be weighted. You can add the distance between the cities. Or it can represent the road between the cities. These graphs are used to represent many different kinds of information. There are infinite possibilities for us to better understand and look at the whole set of information. That is a network. That's it for this video guys. I hope you've learned something. If you have, please hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.